So hello guys, today we are going to learn a software named Inventor 3D or Inventor Professional or whatever you call it, Autodesk Inventor. Uh, it's a great software. It is uh, very user friendly. So let's begin. So first of all, this is the basic view that you get when you open Inventor 2021 or any other version that you are using. So basically there are four types you can create a part, you can create an assembly and then create a part in the assembly and then begin or else you can firstly create the part from here. This is the basic ribbon. You can also start a new file from here. So here also you can start a new file. Okay, so let's begin with the new file. Click on part, create a new part. Now to load, if, if it's the first time you're starting the software, it's gonna take time. It's gonna take time to load. So, it's better to be patient. So I've got these, these ribbons that you can see, I've got them right out from like if there's a ribbon over here, right? If I take this ribbon out, it comes out. But if I take this ribbon in, it, it goes on in. So if I don't want this ribbon, I can go to show panels menu. I don't want simulation and you'll see simulation is gone. I don't want parameters. I go to show panel. I don't want parameters. You see parameters are gone. So yeah, we firstly begin with the uh, go to files. We go to properties and see if everything is working fine. So click on Auto save. And uh, just see if everything is fine. Material is generally is used. Just everything is usually fine with inventor, but it's better to check all our properties and everything. This is how you can also create a new file over here. You see, you can create a new file by standard IPT. IPT is the format to which a file gets saved in Inventor. Drawings can be prepared, assembly can be prepared, whatever you want. Okay, I'll click on cancel. So, first we will begin a new sketch. This, that's how we get to the. So, you can see the small box here. If you click on it, right. It will show its strike pane. If you want isometric, if you click on this corner, it will turn to isometric. If you want a front view, click on front. If you want a link isometric, so this block is very high, very user friendly. Now, see if you want to zoom, so move your middle mouse button towards yourself. Scroll it down, you can see your zooming. Scroll it forward, you can see your zooming out. If you want to rotate, shift middle mouse button, rotate. You can also rotate from here. Press on this, the circle comes. You can press anywhere inside the circle and see you can you can rotate. If you want to pan, you can click on this hand. You can press on your object, you can pan. Now, if you want, escape will exit you from any command that you are using. So, like if I want to pan this way using the mouse, so you can press on the pedal mouse button, you can see you can pan easily. Rotate, shift, pedal mouse button, press. Keep press both of them to see the rotate. Uh, what right? 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 Just see where I'm heading. Yeah. So now we we'll create first sketch front plane or the YZ plane. I don't know which plane this is. The YZ plane. We'll start our first sketch in Inventor. So line, click anywhere on the point or for the center point over here. See, we create line for point, second point. Now you you will not get out of the command unless you until you press, uh, press escape. Or well, there's another thing that you can press on the line over here. And right click and click OK. See, when you click right click, there comes beautiful log. Snap. Where you can snap whatever you want. Like if I want a uh, to maybe undo, see, it's gone. So, right click is a very useful snap on that you can get. 
mentor or a beautiful mold that you can remember. Of course, the topic of behavior or explain. So, perfect for your work. But you want to go on creating points. You can see it is creating points. I press on this check button. I will accept the command. This is this is also another way you can accept the command. Now let's see. If I press on this point, if I drag it, the spline moves. There's also another spline, which is tangent to a line. See, if I want, I can move the spline separate away. This is also a nice feature. The equation is the line. The equation curve is another curve where you put your x coordinate and go by coordinate. Or you can see you can over over it. Then you have to do it. You can see. If I over over it, you can see the point of view. So what you write? D has to be D. You can give a n minus n minus 1. Give the max one that you form a nice curve over here. So it's it's a bit complicated. So we will learn that later. Maybe it is not necessary that much. As you pick it up, I click on a point, it draws a circle. Okay, click on a point, it draws a circle. Tangent circle is something else. Like if I want to draw a circle in this curve, or in this curve, this line in this circle. So now we have to select first line, we have to select this, this second line and uh, third line I would give a uh, maybe I'll, I'll select this so it's creating a tangent this way. It's better if I explain you another way like if, um, if I draw a line here. Okay, now I click on circle tangent. First, second, third. See? Very simple. Ellipse, ellipse is another thing. You have to uh, select Ctrl A. Select exit from the mother. Select Ctrl A. Now just draw a huge rectangle by left clicking mouse button. You can see I'm drawing the entire rectangle. Now it has selected everything. I press on delete. Everything gets deleted. So it's a control Y to redo control Z on mutual commands. Select the center point. I give it the axis, the future axis for the ellipse. I give the minor axis. See, ellipse is done. So we have done with the ellipse. Now what's left? The arc is left, arc is very simple. Select first point, select the second point. And uh, you can see the arc is formed. The way it is like tangent rather like uh, from the start point. Now select an end point. Now I will select uh, this as the end point. See? Well, sometimes I'll select uh, maybe this point. I'm not holding on it. Set up. See? And uh, an hour before. Now, center point up is very simple. Center point up is like uh, <coughs> if you uh, press on this over here, press on this command, as you can see, you can draw an arc as to whatever degrees you want. If I say I want 120, 150 degrees, arc is formed by 150 degrees. Okay, this is the basic. Now I'll show you how to draw a rectangle by two point. I select, uh, I select the first point, I select the second point, see, rectangle is formed. Angle rectangle is also very easy, select the first point, I give the second point, I give the third point, now I tend to keep the angle, I can also the angle through this, first I give the rectangle 60 degrees, rectangle is formed, also is formed, rectangle or center point, you give a center point, Rectangle is formed considering on the center. Three points rectangle is something different. Like if I give this is the first point, second point, and uh, maybe this is the third point over here. See, rectangle is formed. Slot is very easy. I give the first point and I give the second point. Slot.
slot is four. What else slot is something different? Give a start point to here. Now an end point over here or here maybe. Now see it's forming a slot in between the area or in between this point. See. This is the overall slot. This slot is very simple. The game to a thing. This are just a set of things which I've created. <coughs> Select the three point slot. First, second, third. See? First point, second point. Slot is easy slot. Now uh, we move to polygon. Polygon is very simple. Center point. Now there is a uh, option comes. So comes right. Which uh, it is like inside the circle. Or this is. One is. Circumcised, circumscribed, <laughs> another one is inscribed. Inscribed means it is inside the circle. So, scribed means it is outside the circle. You can get uh, the amount you want, maybe how you want. One will like exit you. Yeah, so it is pretty much. Fillet is very nice. Fillet is another nice command. Like if I uh, four angle. Or rectangle over here. If I want to give fillet over here, fillet, first line, second line, well, this very less like maybe of 50 mm. 50 mm is also less because the length of the line is too much. Yeah, just, uh, just show you. If I zoom over here, it has formed the fillet, but it is unable to see over here. But see, now it is unable to see. Now if I double click on it, Right click on it, I click on properties, properties, and double click on this arrow. Mention I want maybe 55. See, it's 55. Actually, the triangle that I created is very big. If I create another triangle over here, it is 150 by 150. If I want to give a fillet, I click on fillet, and it's like two sides 50. See. Another command infinite itself is chamfer. I keep the first line, I keep the second line, and the chamfer distance may be 50. What I do? Click the pop and go to the C. Give chamfer this point, this line, chamfer of AB. You can also give 100 for me or so, you get a 100 chart. It's very easy. Text is like, if I want to write a text, uh, maybe a one. Okay. See, let's write a text. You can also edit like all the text code. If I want a text code here. Like anything, like you know, see, text is coming. Now, what is happening is like the text is getting horizontally. So, you can see it is writing across that line which we want. If you want this one, select text. Change whatever you want, like uppercase, lowercase, anything you want. You can change it. This is the basic if you want to change the font, the font is over here. So, this way you can add a text, you can also add color to your text, or whatever you want. You can do whatever you want in this spacing, everything, anything you want. 
so you can also add a parameter you can also add an xbox whatever you want so x is very simple point is it just gives a point somewhere like in space you can create multiple points in space project geometry i'll tell you later what it is like if i want to move a command i'll select i'll select uh, Select maybe I'll select um, this line. Move. Select geometry to move. Selected base point. I'll give this base point. Yes, yes. I can see you can rotate anywhere you want. Now it is it's lagging a bit but you can take your geometry wherever you want through base point okay uh, trim is another thing if you go on object if I want to trim if I hover over it you can see it is turning dotted that means if I have to trim this I'll trim this okay if uh, I want to trim this thing I'm trimming this if I want to trim thing I'm trimming this but it's connected so uh, if I want to trim this see it's very easy. Scale means uh, I'll just tell you what is scale. Like if you draw a small rectangle over here, if I want to scale, I'll select press on select. Press on select scale control and press select everything. Select base point and select this is the base point. See now scaling scale factor maybe two. See it's already scaled. Copy means like if, if if you want to select something that you have to copy. If I select all these commands, I keep the base point over here. I can create multiple copies. Yeah, but it is uh, you can see it is eradicating the first one that you wanted. So that is what happens. Okay, so this is how you can copy. Extend you can extend the line. Click on this line, see it get extended to the next part. Split if I want to split this line, it the uh, both line gets both the lines get splitted. Offset if I want an offset inside the square, see. So get 10. The distance between the off offset becomes 10. So yeah, pretty much easy things to understand. Mm. Okay, so the remaining functions are rectangular pattern. We'll study rectangular pattern. I create a small rectangle here. You see it is becoming it is become very big. So I'll say maybe 50 mm by 50 mm this is the small rectangle now see I have to pattern this rectangle rectangular pattern is always something different rectangular pattern I'll select the entire geometry and now I'll give it the direction I give this direction to it now I want to want to maybe I want uh, 5 and maybe I want them at a distance of uh, 50 mm. Now you can see they are forming 50. If you can see on the screen, you see this thing. It is it is forming some triangles. Uh, I'll give direction two. I'll give uh, this direction. Maybe I want five in this direction too. And now you can see they are forming five patterns. Uh, the distance between them will be again 50. Now I'll click on OK. Now see, we have formed a pattern. It's uh, very simple. Now, if I want a circular pattern, now a circular pattern. First of all, you draw a circle. I draw a circle over here. Now, dimension is very important. You have to dimensions like I if you click on this thing, it will form a dimension maybe uh, 300 mm. Now, draw a circle over here. A circle of maybe 100 mm. Okay. Now, I want to circular pattern this circle around this thing the on circular pattern I'll select geometry I'll select this geometry and now axis I can give this as axis or I would um, 
select this I want how many I want I want maybe four and okay see it has formed four by taking equal angles between them it has taken equal angles so further uh, further we can also use this again uh, we can use the mirror command click on mirror uh, for, for using mirror basically we can draw a line over here mm -hmm. you can draw a line over here It's not coming auto okay now I want to mirror this entire circles towards this side okay now how will how will I do I'll click on mirror and set what I have to mirror if I have to mirror the circle I'll select the mirror line I'll select apply see the circles form it's uh, very simple click on done and you would accept the command so this is some mirror command that you can use now these are the various constraints that you can give like if if i want to dimension or I, if i want things to be perpendicular like if i'm drawing a line if i draw a line this way now if i want this line to be perpendicular or to like if i select perpendicular command this and this see um, they are both are perpendicular so you can apply this relations equal command this and this they both will become equal if I give tangency command this this see it becomes tangent so these are the constraints that you can use while uh, now this is uh, this was for points if you want to create a center point you will give it a center over here okay, if I click on this I want a center I click on enter these are the commands that are not basically used that much but they are essential ok alright guys so let's begin with another very important function that uh, we should or I would say they are constraints that we should learn while making any drawings or any um, any sketches in uh, inventor so the first uh, before this i'll just tell you that how to set units units are very important in inventor so you click on the file button over here file button and go to options then in options click on file default template now you can see it is in mm millimeters and the standard that we are using is iso so this is very very important while you are using so these are the various this menu just if you just tweak with this menu you will get a lot of functions you will get to know a lot of functions so don't change anything but uh, you can tweak components and you can edit features from your like over here in parts you can just create opaque surfaces or or do anything like you like anything you want over here so this is this was very important how to set units I'll tell you again just go click on file um, click on options then click on file here again and then just click on this configure default template and now you can see it is showing millimeters and uh, ISO is also showing so very easy okay now we are going to learn about this menu what is this menu so like if you create any uh, consider um, I would say a rectangle by a center point so now you have created a rectangle by center point now if you want to dimension click on dimension click on this point enter dimension click on this line enter dimension so this is this was very simple now what happens is sometimes like uh, consider there's a line over here like I'm, I've uh, drawn a vertical line over here like the mouse function is very important to invent like if you move your mouse accurately the line will come straight like I move your right accurately but if I just if I just even twist bring it down little you know the, the line gets 
line happens at an angle so that is important now if i if i want to say like if you over 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 here like it is saying coincident constraint now i click on coincident i click on the line i click on a point you can see it becomes coincident now if if i click on this one parallel constraint click on this one click on this one click on this one but it will not happen because because we have already given another constraint over here so now see now it will happen parallel this line this line now it is again showing it is over constraining the component okay we will just uh, delete this and we'll create another line this way parallel this this see it is becoming parallel now if i want if i create another line over here now i want uh, this line perpendicular to this one so i click on here perpendicular constraint click on this line click on this line but it is not happening because it is over straining the string again i'll try this and this again it is coming over constraining so how to get rid of this like what's wrong in this thing i click on perpendicular constraint this to this see now they both have become perpendicular similarly another perpendicular constraint this right click is very important you can just right click and exit the command any time you want if you you can also connect uh, you can also like if i hover over this if i right double right place i just right click on this object over here so we can convert it into construction directly from here itself okay now where were we okay we were in making tangent now if i draw if, if i draw a circle over here okay if i want this line to be tangent to this circle over here how will i do this i just click on tangent command i click on curve i'll click on line c curve the first body becomes tangent the second body so this was the series but if consider if i create a circle if i create if i use the circle as the next command i click on tangent over here i click on the first object and then i click on the second object now you can see but if i uh, if i like constrain my circle over this point okay and uh, i I click on this circle. I click on this point. Now it has become what happened? Okay, something wrong is happening. Like if I draw a circle over here, if I am uh, like collinear mm, constraint, I am giving this circle and this point. Okay, something else is happening over here. I I believe the circle is taking the dimensions of the point hmm coincident constraint we'll do a thing uh, we'll give it a tangent to this line like if i am creating a circle over here now i click on the tangent command i click on the circle i click on the line now they are tangent again i click on the tangent command this line this circle see now the line is becoming tangent to the circle so this was a very simple method to explain now there are many ways there are uh, uh, constraint for symmetric you can try all of them these are very important constraints and these are very very handy now here you can see there's a feature over here if, if you can see properly there's a feature project geometry now what is this what is this project geometry i need to know what is this uh, project geometry maybe I don't know if how many people are aware of this thing. Now, if I click on the circle, I click on a rectangle over here. I finished the sketch. Now, what I do is I extrude.
now i'll do is i'll extrude click on extrude it is taking time so yeah now i click on the edge again it is taking time okay I rotate and i see that it is extruding 10 mm okay now what happens is uh, like if i want to create now i'm out of the sketch if, if i want to create a hole on this one okay and so how will i create this you can just take this and start it to uh, directly you can start a sketch over here but sometimes what happens is some some holes or some objects are uh, like consider if i finish the sketch now i am turning this object around uh, maybe some axis now if i want to sketch here on the back plane okay i have, I have to I have to create a hole on this surface over here so i'll start on the sketch i'll click on this face now i am in the sketcher menu now i want this edge over here this edge you can see this edge so what i'll do is i'll click on this project geometry feature i click on this edge now you can see it has become yellow i click on this edge this has also become yellow now i can uh, maybe create a circle using this as a reference point now what is happening is the circle is formed but it is formed on the inner surface no issue what i'll do is i'll exit from the command i'll give the dimensions now i know these two circles are on the in inner plane the, 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 the middle plane now i can easily give relations or dimensions between this circle and this edge over here this edge over here i can just uh, type uh, like 30 from this edge and from this edge this edge is readily available so dimension this circle from this edge it is showing 5 I, I, I want 5 itself now see the circle is formed but before you escape from the command and you exit finish sketch option you have to delete these edges or you have to like right click on them and create for construction right click on them and create for construction because it is going to be an open sketch this is going to be an open sketch no it is not happening i don't know what's the reason i'll just delete uh, this edge over here yeah so you have to convert to construction or else if you want to extrude the circle the circle would not be extruded because that edge has been converted into an entity the, the geometry has been projected on your sketcher menu so always remember this is very helpful when you want to create a hole in a in some face or in some on some object but sometimes what happens is when you extrude the object its edges are not visible on the plane that you want in the sketcher menu so you can get those hidden edges through this project geometry feature so now we'll finish the sketch now you can see you can see there's a circle over here there must be a if you click on the sketch over here you can see there is a you can easily see there's a sketch over here okay now what we'll do is we'll extrude this extrude maybe the surface um, mid plane and uh, through all and cut you can see that the hole has happened but consider that if you have haven't if you didn't use this feature this project to geometry feature like if i click over here i select this face if you have to use this now you can see if you hover around around this edge over here you are not getting any reference point like even if you're creating a hole over here that hole will not be appropriate or else you have to create a new rectangle right from this point and right from this edge or maybe you have to take a corner to corner rectangle over here you have to select this edge this edge then take the measurements then create a line maybe from here to maybe this point or maybe somewhere and 
then you have to do it so that is what you will have to do but this project geometry feature does it easily okay um, okay now what else is left I have just have to check so you have we have gone through project geometry now there are many ways to project geometry now this is a, a, another very beautiful feature where you can uh, just click on this project cut edges and what will happen is so sometimes there there is a cut in the geometry so we can directly project our cut edges on the sketch itself like if I take the section view a section view of any object if we have taken and if we want to project that on a sketching plane then we can do that using this project cut edges feature so it is, it is a it is a bit complicated so you can try but it is not that more that much used maybe in a complicated component that will be used so you can also try it on your own but it has some issues so yeah uh, where were we okay so there are various formats over here you can change a format of any line using or any anything you can change the color like in autocad we do it is similar so we are very much through the sketching i just see whatever is left the modify feature project geometries are Strange is done. Right click and show panel step and add something. Let's see what. Okay, it is showing block and everything. What's left again? Add click on show panels and parameters is left. Parameters is another beautiful feature. I'll tell you about parameters a little bit. Uh, so now it is opening. Parameters is opening. Now see, it has already been opened. Parameters is active now. Now, okay. What we can do is sometimes we can add a parameter, like uh, like I add a parameter of uh, length, maybe, and the length uh, of maybe maybe something and I click on that now I click on uh, I create a line over here I click on this line I double click it on it I click on dimensions of this line and I click on length. Now you can see it has turned from red to black. So that means it has already con considered the dimension that I gave. Now see it that line is vanished because that line has become one mm in length. Okay, again we click on parameters. Click on that line and we'll uh, equation will turn it as um, thirty. We'll create d four minus d two. Now we can see d four minus d2 in brackets always consider brackets now d4 minus d2 is uh, 20 mm we'll just uh, divide it by 2 now you can see if we d4 30 minus 10 becomes 20 divided by 2 becomes 10 now it's done now you can see here, here there must be a line over here whose dimension is 10 mm you can see over here you can see this yellow point over here. Uh, that line is invisible. Now, if you want to hide something, just click on right side, click on this solid, okay, this solid body, right click on it, and click on visibility. Now, see, it is gone. Now, you can see this line is there, this line is visible. And the length of the line is 10 mm so that's how you can use equations okay that line was not visible because of the solid body now if, if you right click on it again 
if you click on visibility you can see you can see the object but you can also see the line over here so that is how you can use equations you can also create an entire object like if i want to create an object and if i have a single dimension like if, if i want to create a gear over here and uh, i only know the module or uh, yeah i only know the module and i input a parameter uh, maybe another parameter over here and uh, if i click add numeric i click on module and i give the module of maybe um 5 mm module i want so i can create an entire gear consider a module as m i don't know if how many guys have used um solid box over here so it is it, it is perfectly similar to solid but instead of equations it is parameters in inventor so that is the meaning so using this module you can create an entire gear and if i want to change the size of the gear or maybe the number of teeth or it is related module number of teeth is related to module so if i even change the value of module from this menu over here if i make it 4 the entire equations and the entire geometry that you made using that module would change and as and a gear of low size or a gear of low dimensions or maybe a reduced gear or maybe some changes in length or anything you can use this parameters in a very effective way so that is the parameters function so yeah we are pretty much completed with the sketching phenomenon maybe um, now we we'll talk about other features like if I want to create a fillet after the model is completed then there's always an option over here. you can see if I want to create a fillet I click on the fillet now it is 2 mm over here if I click on this edge now you can see that edge is turning into a fillet now sometimes what happens is uh, if now you can see this option over here these arrow keys are very important if you click on them you can also change some features over here and uh, sometimes if you want a fillet which is face fillet or sometimes maybe around full fillet can also use. a variable fillet is that one like if i turn this object over i click on this thing okay if i click on variable fillet okay if i select now it is considering both okay we just apply apply to it just a second let's just tell you what a fillet is i click on variable i select this edge okay start mm maybe is uh 2 mm okay and end end is maybe uh 4 mm now you can see it is it has it is a variable fillet because it is considering 3 mm or 4 mm on this edge over here and 3 mm is this over here 2 mm is this over here and 4 mm is this over here so that is it is creating a variable fillet and the direction depends on which side you select now consider we take another edge over here okay. i consider this edge over here okay now i click on fillet i click on variable i click on the part okay and the position start position is this is the position like this is considering it one and this is considering it zero now if i want to alternate it okay i want to make this i click on cancel okay i'll just show you again select variable select now i give it points okay i give the edge end now end point is i want this point to be the end point just select 
Now see, it has taken it as a starting point, the end point, it will select the temperature. Now starting at what 4. You can see this has become 4 over here. If you see properly, you can see this has become 4. If I click, click on this again, I click on edit, I just want this edge to be this edge over here. See, this is because this is the start point. Consider this is the start point. Keep this edge over here. See, it is. It is now. It is doing a very beautiful thing over here. You can just give it points, and to the points you can create a variable fillet, a fillet that is four mm over here, maybe two mm here, three mm here. So you can do this using fillet. Fillet is a a very useful command. Now we'll again click on fillet, and we'll see which is the final type of setbacks. Set patches are a very different thing. Like if you create a cube over here, a cube like this one, and if, if I want to give the entire cube or the, that vertex of that cube, if you want to create a fillet at that particular vertex, I'll just show you just a second. Just create and start. I'll just, uh, just uh, maybe I'll just create a new file for you so that you understand properly. Okay. Now I'll just create a box over here. With the center of the box, give okay. edges over here. I uh, select OK and everything. Now you can see if uh, I click on fillet, if I click, click on setbacks, setbacks is we have to create the edge over here. I don't know why it is not selecting some issue with it should select vertexes. It should select a vertex, but I don't know why it is not selecting. So you can just turn this vertex into a, a fillet. The fillet we should work with this boundary, around this boundary, and along this boundary. I don't know why it is not happening. Okay, I'll just show you full round fillet. Click on this. You click on this. And click on this. Full round fillet. This. 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 Click on OK. Now you can see it has formed a face round fillet. Okay, this is a face fillet. Just click on this part. And face 2. Click on this part. Click on OK. I will show you two again. Click on this one, face fillet. This part, this part. See, it is happening. I don't know why this this thing is not happening. What I can say? Oh uh, yeah, setbacks, edges. I'm giving it an edge over here. Why this is moving? I don't know why the edge is not selected. The vertex is not selected. Uh, maybe I don't know. So. Maybe there's an issue over here. So this was the basic fillet. Now shell. Now if I click on shell, I click on this entire body. I would just select this. I can see it as transformed. Click on the entire body and click on shell. Now if I get thick. 
make myself a uh, mm Okay, I don't know what's the issue. I'll just create another part. Part. Create a front face. I'll create a rectangle. Click on finish sketch. I'll uh, choose this rectangle. Maybe. And now click on shell. Now you can see it has automatically selected. I give it 5 mm thickness to click on it. Now shell is not visible from you. Now see, now it is selecting the vertex. Maybe we can create a vertex out of this. Now, first of all, I'll show shell. And uh, now views are very important. Like if I want a view, I click on or I'll just click, click on F7. Just show you the view. Click on manage or click on view, half section view along which plane. I'm out to find the plane. You can find the plane, Jove. View master. Okay, I'll just click on this one. Section view. This part. Okay. Click on half section view. I'll show you wireframe. You can see it has created a in a wireframe view. You can also see. I'll just change it to just change it to just click on half section view. I click on this plane. Click on half section view, click on the surface, click over here, click on enter. You can see, you can see the half section view. I give the thickness of 5 mm that is intersect that is too much but it's fine like you, you can see half section control z to again come back to normal so if you want to change the properties of the shell double click on the shell over here you can create 2 mm and now if you again click on uh, half section view create this plane Click on enter. Now, how I do this? I just drag my left mouse button to a point. If, if I create a half section, I click on this plane. Now, I click on this, on this face and I drag it to the center. Click on select, and you can see the half section. You can also create a plane in between and also give the half section. I was thinking about it previously, but now it's fine, right? Okay, half section is completed. Alright, so we have finished with the shell, chamfer, fillet. Uh, let's see how the hole works now. Alright, for that we'll make a new part again. Click on new part. Okay, now here we have a new part started. 2D sketch on this plane. I'll also show you what is extrude and revolve now, first of all. So I'll select this rectangle over here. This one rectangle by middle point. All right, so okay, I'll finish the sketch now. When you click on extrude over here, extrude this pop up menu will come, and uh, you will have to give what amount of extrusion you want. Maybe 25 mm. Twenty-five mm. Click on OK. 
see now the extrusion is 25 mm. okay uh, now we'll sh now I'll show you the revolve command uh, revolve command uh, revolve click on revolve after you have created the sketch select this area and now axis this axis see so this was the revolve command i'll show you also holes how you can create holes you click on hole you click on the face on which you want a hole and uh, you use what kind of hole you want whether you want a tapered hole or a spot face hole or this kind of hole you can give measurements over here uh, maybe 12 just click on the errors to see what else you can edit hole of diameter 5 throughout a bigger hole I will make a uh, like 25 see now you have created a hole inside this if you want to give like threading click on thread surface so give this internal surface what amount what kind of thread you want isometric profile size 25 designation 6 size class and everything click on ok here you can see you can you have created a thread it is not an actual thread it's a cosmetic thread so that is what it is now what command is remaining ok sweep coil I'll show you emboss tv rib I'll show you uh, decal ok no issue fillet I've already shown chamfer is nothing but you click over here click on the edge what uh, what kind of chamfer you want if you want uh, a distance and angle or if you want uh, two distances you can apply see here yeah, is a chamfer over here shell I've already shown you it just shells out whatever body you have draft I'll show you click on draft click on this face uh, degree I want like 15 <laughs> Pull direction this much draft is not possible maybe I'll turn it to 5 degrees faces this face I've given ok I'll just check if the draft is created you click on the right view you can see now the draft is created over here see there's a minor draft over here so you can also use draft combine is nothing but this used to combine two two bodies together see direct is like uh, if i want to uh, maybe uh, extrude this face more if i want to extrude this face outside so i'll just click on direct i click on the face and i'll click on this click on apply right click and apply you see now it has increased the so this is direct thick and offset it uh, it basically removes the like if this is a face over here, if i've created a shell and uh, if if i have a face to it so it will it would basically what it would do is it would uh, thicken that face or it would remove the thickness and I'll just show you mm, I'll create a new part for you Directly create a box. Click 
click on OK. OK, now add, click on Shell. Now, if you can see in the half section view, if, uh, if we have created that thickness, okay, there is a thickness here. Okay. Now, I'll go back to 3D model. Now, I'll uh, see thicken and offset. Now, it will ask me the face. I'll give this face. Okay. Now, if, if I want like, more thickness over here, uh, maybe 3mm. Click on OK. And now, if I click on again view, and I see the half section view, I select this plane, I drag it to the center. Now you can see it has added more thickness to this side. So this is what basically thicken and offset does. You can also reduce the thickness. You can also make it 0.5 from it. So if I click on this, if I Right here, uh, 0.5. If I click on enter, you can see that thickness has been added 0.5 more. If I again click on thicken, if I if I write like 0, 0 is not working, 9 minus 1 mm, or maybe minus 0.5. This should not apply because there's a direction over here. If you want inside, you can see inside. If you want outside, you could create outside. So this is basically what what the thick and offset command does. Move bodies just for moving bodies. What else is left in this? So this menu is exactly over. Now we'll talk about sweep. Oh no! Now we'll talk about rectangular pattern. Okay, I just. Uh, now we are again now if I want to create a hole over here I'll just show you what is rectangular pattern I click I okay I create a hole over here uh, the thickness I want is Mm, positions okay. What else I can give over here? Now see, now I have uh, I've given a thickness. Uh, I've given a hole. This following cube. Now, if if I want. To create a pattern, a rectangular pattern of such holes on this surface over here and here. So how can I do it? Click on rectangular pattern. I click on the feature I want. This is the feature I want. Rectangular pattern. I click on the hole. You can also click from here. I don't know why I'm not selecting the hole. Okay, now it has selected the hole. Direction, uh, this direction, direction to this direction. Okay, spacing and everything I can give. Spacing not uh, okay, not 10 mm, like 2 mm, or maybe 1 mm too. And the, your this side spacing is 1 mm, or maybe like 5 mm. Let's see how this I would create a zero way of. Here it's 
so okay over here hold. now see i have created a hole which is a pattern exactly right opposite to the hole that i created so it pattern you just have to give directions at which direction i want okay you can see whatever feature it is that feature would be same there would be no change in the feature if i click on this face uh, if i go to sketch the starter to sketch on this face if i create a circle over here 1.67 finish sketch if i extrude this hole click on extrude click on the hole opposite direction and cut material okay i click on okay now see i have created one hole now i want many holes i want like series of holes on this entire thing i click on the rectangular pattern i'll select the feature that i want I select direction. This direction is the first direction. I will give direction to this direction is the second direction. Maybe on the opposite side. This if you press on this, it will change this thing down. And uh, this direction is uh, this one. And yeah, now it's fine. Now I don't want to. I want like five. Tap. Two mm distance. Tap. Here also I want uh, 5 yeah, distances 2mm okay, not more than 5 I want like 10 over here not 10 will 10 is increasing so I will just select 8 over here 8 I think is fine 8 also here is fine I click on ok and now you can see you have just created a pattern of holes over here you can see there are many holes over here approximately there are 8 by 8, 64 holes over here ok circular pattern is the same thing what I'll do is I'll um, start a 2D sketch on this front plane I'll create a circle Click on circle. I'll uh, right click on this. Create for construction. I'll create. Um, I'll just uh, dimensionalize it to uh, reduced. Maybe 12 mm. Okay, now I'll take another circle. I'll draw this circle over. Circle of uh, 2mm, okay. Finish my sketch. What I'll do is I'll click on circular pattern, okay. Okay, first of all, I have to create a hole. I'll click on extrude, cut material, okay. Now, see, I have a hole. Now, I want this hole to be a circular pattern, so I'll click on circular. I click on the circular pattern. I click on this, click on this feature. I give the rotation axis uh, okay. Features Okay, here it needs an axis, it is, it is asking me an axis So, okay, I'll give the axis over here I'll click on OK. See, I just gave an axis of a random hole over here or somewhere. So it has created a circular pattern in this way. 
you can also give a, a normal axis through a point over here through this what we'll do is we'll give a normal axis this is through a point over here give axis over here okay now we have axis over here now I'll use the same thing circular pattern I'll select uh, the feature you can select the feature from here it, it's easy okay then I'll select the axis uh, yeah six see now you have six holes okay this is also a way you can use circular okay guys so now we'll learn about this thing sketch driven pattern so how sketch driven pattern works we'll click on a new file standard ipt create now i'll create a box simple box uh, on this on this plane okay it would be 50 50 is looking small maybe 200 ok now we have a box over here now what we are going to do is we are going to ok we are going to create a sketch to the pattern first of all we will create a this sketch to anywho now ok I have created a a small hole, the hole is very much small. We will again create the hole, but this time a bigger one. The dimensions. Click on OK. Now see, we have a hole over here. Now I want this pattern to be sketch driven. So for a sketch driven pattern, I click on uh, first of all, I click on this plane and I'll start a 2D sketch over here. Okay, I'll give uh, many points over here. So how can I give points on this surface over here? Click on point, click on this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. Okay, finish sketch. Now, what I'll do is I'll uh, set up the command. Now, I'll click on sketch driven pattern. I'll select the feature, the feature that I want. Okay, and I'll fill it. I'll select the base points. So, I'll click on OK. Let's see. We have a sketch driven pattern. So this is basically a sketch driven pattern. All right. So uh, now we we'll learn how to uh, mirror. So basically, for a mirror, what you require is 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 a plane. Okay. So mirror, like if I've created this object or this feature. I need a plane in between the in between the body to create a similar feature on this side. So basically, we are going to add a plane. Now we are going to add a offset plane, offset plane from this point, and take it into center, maybe minus hundred. Now this is the plane. Now to mirror, you have to click on mirror. You have to click on the feature, and then you have to click on the mirror plane, and then click on OK. And see, the same feature has been mirrored around this plane. So this is the mirror function. Okay. Now we'll see these functions in the mirror. Extrude is simple, revolve is simple. I've, sh I've shown you both revolve and extrude. Now we'll go to 
sweep command. So again, we'll start a new part. Okay, here we'll uh, sweep function basically requires this tree sketch first of all. So I select this plane. I create a circle. I finish my sketch. Now, again, I'll create another sketch, and this sketch would be towards the normal plane. And uh, I'll draw a spline. Okay, I'll select this point over here. Okay, and I'll finish to the sketch. Uh, where's the sketch two? Okay, this was sketch one. Sketch two is not seen. Either. Can't see sketch sketch two. Again, we try adding another sketch, which is normal to the sketch. Okay, I'll select this. I'll select uh, which plane maybe. Oh uh, yeah, this plane. Again, I'll take a spline. I'll try to create a spline. Okay, I'll finish my sketch. So now we have a sketch in. Uh, one plane and another sketch in another another plane. Now what I'll do is I'll extrude. First of all, I'll just uh, no issue. So I click on sweep. Okay, I'll select curve. I'll I'll select this curve. I'll select on OK, and here you can see that. Sweep command. I sweep that entire curve. Or else we can do another thing. We can right click on this. We can edit sketch. And what we'll do is we'll uh, reduce this circle to five. Finish sketch. And you can see that how sweep command works. Next, uh, we are going to talk about loft. So, for loft, we need uh, again start a new part for loft. So, basically, we require two planes for using the loft offset plane. Click on this view master and uh, right click on the front plane. But let's just do a thing. Start a 2D sketch on this plane. Okay. And draw some. Finish my sketch. Okay. So this is on the front plane. So I'll create another plane which is offset plane. Now the thing here is that I can't see my front plane over. So how can I see my front plane? Alright, so I'll just uh, click on this plane. I'll uh, visibility turn on the visibility of this plane. Now I'll select offset from plane I click on this plane and I create and I'll create an offset of uh, maybe 50 okay then what I'll do is I'll start a new sketch on this uh, this plane uh, I'll basically create a polygon of this one click on the center and create exact polygon over here I'll finish my sketch. Now I want to loft create a loft like between these two sketches over. So I'll uh, click on the loft command. Okay. Sections to add. This is the section. This is the section. And I click on OK. And you can see that I've created a loft. So this is basically the loft command. 
all right so now we'll try the rip command so to for the command you need a geometry like this okay now i have created a this extrusion i right click on it and i'll edit the feature okay i'll extrude it from both sides okay i click on okay now this feature has been extruded from both sides and there lies a plane if you click on uh, the origin and if you click on this plane i can show you this one yeah if i create on click on okay, this and this okay so you can see that the yz plan a plane is exactly cutting my object now see if if i want to add a rib over here so i will have to turn this visibility on now what should i do is i want to create a rib on this part of this so i start click on sketch i click on this figure over here and what i do is i draw a line from uh, this part to this part okay click on okay okay now i'll finish the sketch now i'll click on rip i'll select the profile I click on the profile, I click on OK. And you can see that I changed the plane. If I click on normal to the plane, you can't form a rib like this. But if I click over here, see, this, these are the two options. If you want to make the rib parallel to the sketch plane or sometimes if you have to make the rib normal to the sketch plane so these features are very important and i'll give a thickness of maybe 4 mm and see the rib increases if i give 2 mm the rib disc decreases you can also add a finite like there would be a gap over here if you see and if you click on this one there would be no gap over here so yeah this is the a rib emboss is nothing but if you have to create an embossed feature Okay, so we we'll click on emboss. Okay. So basically, it is used for if if you want to give if, if you want to emboss some shape. I click on the sketch. I start to the sketch on this plane, anyway. and I write some text over here. I give a text box. I'll write um, like the part number one two three four. Click on OK. click on ok and now i finish my sketch now see this feature this is exactly firstly check if this is exactly on this ok this needs some edit sketch feature just move it towards and i'll uh, decrease the font a bit Maybe to 2.12. I click on OK. Still, it is not fitting. This is not the font I believe. Okay, this is the font. Okay, okay now it will fit exactly. Click on this feature. I finish sketch. Now, if I click on emboss, select the profile. This is the profile. Get the uh, yeah to one mm. Click on OK, and now you can see. Embossing looks nice on this part over here. Okay, so this is emboss. So now we've finished sweep, loft, rip, emboss, coil. Okay. All right. So now, now we'll uh, learn a feature. What's remaining? Coil. Yeah. So for coil, start as to be sketch on this plane. Okay. Now what you do is you create uh, lines. One line here over here. Okay. One line from this point to this point. Okay. This side. This this is the radius of your point. And the circle at this point uh, maybe yeah. Finish the sketch. Now you should have you have a L with a point circle over here. Now 
Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically click on coil. Okay, now it has automatically selected. Click on axis, give this an axis. The pitch, the pitch is revolutions. Maybe I want like 50 revolutions. Not 50, 25. Okay, I want 25 revolutions. Height 50, axis okay. See, we have created a coil. So this is how you create a coil. So unwraps nothing. It basically, if you have created a structure which has a, it is basically used for, basically used for sheet metal. Unwrap usually creates unwraps a body. Like it, if you have tried explode or uh, in sheet metal, if it's used for solid works, it bas basically flattens the command. Like if uh, consider. It is basically used for sheet metal, so that is not that much important than you. This is nothing but decal is nothing but it applies an image to your file, so that is also not that much used in 3D model. Split is basically used to split. Basically, if you have created a single body and if, if you have to split it into two components, you can do that using this split using space or maybe uh, if you have a plane in between so you can just split the two bodies so this is basic 3d modeling in the uh, inventor these fits uh, are basically used grills everything are basically used to provide uh, grills basically used like if i create a fire just a second i'll just just create a new, new part of it Okay, now I'll start a 2D sketch over here. I'll uh, create a box. I'll give this plane. Okay, now I'll uh, click on the center plane. Okay, I'll create this. Not 10 mm, maybe 3 mm thickness. Okay, now I'll click on grid. Okay, first of all, for grid, you require a, a, what we can say. See over here, it will show you how the grid is used. You require basically edges and everything. So, I'll again click on this, then I'll start a 2D sketch on this. First of all, I'll create a rectangle. So this is now creating, I want a center point rectangle. So click on this center, I click on the grill. I'll uh, create line over here, one line. Two line, second line. I just mirror what the remaining lines would be. So I just also create one line over here. Okay, now I'll mirror these two lines over here. Mirror command. Select this and this mirror line. Oh, oh, actually, we didn't draw a mirror line, so we have to draw a mirror line. Make it for construction. Another line. make it for construction okay now we have a uh, why this is not working construction okay it is construction okay now i'll mirror the lines uh oh not circular pattern mirror i'll click on uh, control this line this line select on mirror line i'll select this one i click on apply see mirror has happened similarly for upper two lines I'll select these two lines. Okay. I'll give the mirror line this one. Click on apply. I'll finish my sketch. Now I have a 
mirror line now i'll click on grill now first of all grill requires a boundary this is the boundary island is nothing but the i i directly spars i'll directly select ribs so these are my ribs okay spars these are my spars click on okay see we have formed a rib so this is how a rib uh, a grill grills are used grills boss is again the same thing it creates a raised protrusion that is also not that much important if you are doing basic inventor snap fit is nothing but uh, you know if if you if you have to adjust two parts in between one another so that for that you use snap fits it is basically used for uh, plastic parts ruler fillet is again same thing so this is these are the basic stitch and everything that we use in that we'll see in surfacing like if you want to patch a specific surface surfacing commands are basically these so yeah we'll select what other parameters we have okay so 3d modeling basically we are done with 3d modeling okay so we'll move on to sheet metal now so basically for sheet metal uh we have to click on here over here click on uh, sheet metal ipt all right create click on create now the sheet metal is open first of all click on face okay okay first of all you have to start a sketch click on this plane create a rectangle single point uh click on finish sketch now click on face click on the thickness and everything you want the k factor bend relief and everything whatever you want state over here tier options and everything okay click on okay now we'll click on flange if you click on the boundary it will form form flange okay so this is how a flange is created to see counter flange counter flange we'll study later lofted flange is also a different type where you can create a lofted flange as we created a lofted part in the similar way hem now i'll tell you what hem is click on this part and see it creates a hem over here hem is nothing but small part is bent here you can see a small part is bent in this way so this is how just click on the edge and it will bend so next to we see what is a uh, bend there is the bend feature over here how did i go sketch okay. this is the bend feature so bend feature basically requires two edges so i give this edge i give this edge and i click on okay so now you can see now there is a bend over here okay so now we learn fold so for fold you need to draw a center line on this over here so i click on the center line i click on line and i'll draw a line from here to here and i right click okay now this is a center line i don't know why it is blue i believe that 
fold along this I don't know why it is not happening I click on center line click on line Click on line and draw line from here to here. And here I'll click center line. I click on this line. Make it center. I finish. This line should become dark, but it is not becoming. I don't know why. Try fold. I'll get this line. I click on apply. See, so this is how we use the fold command. Next feature we we'll move on to cut. Cut is not okay. Again, we have to create a sketch. Select this face, select 2D sketch, create a circle over here. Okay, finish sketch. Now click on cut over here. Thickness, uh, okay. See, now you create a cut over here. Always remember for fold, you should you require a center line, unless and until it will not it will not fold. Okay, now we'll see what is this corner seam. Okay. For corner seam, I believe we created a part before. What we'll do is we'll uh, Control Z. We'll again, we don't need the sketch. Okay, we'll create a flange. This edge, okay. Flange again, all edges over here. Okay, now what is uh, basically seam? You give it edges. You just give for seam, you just have to give edges only. I can give this edge, this edge, click on OK and see it will align the edges approximately. Again corner punch, I'll uh, rip is something different like if I create rip, if I give edges, I'll again tell you what seam is, give two edges and yeah maximum gap distance 0.1 okay gap size okay and it will just seam the seam the corners that is what corner seam does like if you over over it if you click over here it creates a gap between faces so for that purpose seam is used hole is again the same as cut if you click on hole if you click over here if you click on this face uh, okay positions thickness thickness I want maybe 5 mm click on ok and a hole is, hole is formed actually I formed two holes over here corner round is nothing but it gets it selects a corner edge it creates a round so that is corner or corner chamfer is you just give it just gives a chamfer corner chamfer refold is like if you have unfolded something it will refold it to the previously unfold is similar if you have folded some component it will again unfold it okay so we fold we unfold and then we refold that is how we can do this feature create flat pattern see it will just create a flat pattern of whatever geometry I have made. again go to folded part it will again take yourself to the folded part ok so today we learn about what is a contour flange so for contour flange you have to click on you have only on contour flange so I will click on this plane I will uh, draw basically a line line of uh, this kind so, 
I click on OK, I'll finish my sketch. Then I click on Control Plunge, and it will automatically create, uh, select the profile and everything. The bend radius you can change from your offset direction. You can give on this direction or this direction, up or down. Okay. Second is uh, if you want it. If you want it on both sides, you can use this one. See, this is how you can uh, extend it. The distance you can enter over here, the distance you want, 50 mm. Click on OK. So, this is contour flange. Alright. Next, uh, now we'll talk about contour roll so for contour roll this was the sketch that i previously drew for that uh, uh, for this contour flange so for contour roll what i'm going to do is i'm going to edit the same sketch in this sketch i'm going to create a line straight line okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this center line option over here this one and i select this line I click on center line. See now I have, I have a center line, I have a profile. Okay, I'll finish my sketch. Now I click on contour roll and it will automatically select. Now the degree you want, like what degree you want. If I want like basically 360 degree, it is not possible. Maybe 150 degree. Yeah, it is possible. Two seven zero degree possible. Three hundred degree. Three sixty degree is not possible because uh, I believe the thickness is considered. Three five six, three five eight is possible. Three five. 9 is possible 360 is not possible yeah I click on ok and now I have a plate like structure ok so this sums up our uh, sheet metal I believe I left lofted flange yeah. I left lofted flange so lofted flange is very similar if I have two planes and I have drawn two sketches on these two planes Okay, first place offset to this plane now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a lofted flange between these two planes over here so I click on lofted flange now it is asking me the profile 1 I'll give profile 1 profile 2 I'll give this as profile 2 I click on ok and you can see that we have created or uh, lofted flange over here. So this is a lofted flange that we created. So sheet metal is completely over now. I have uh, told you every every and each and every thing but punch tool is nothing yeah punch tool is remaining click on this part and I'll uh, okay I'll create a new part start a 2d sketch I'll click on this plane okay I'll uh, Click on rectangle, not two point, center point rectangle. I'll click on uh, this thing, create a face. I'll finish my sketch. I'll select my face. I'll click on OK. Now, punch tool. Click on punch tool. Okay, no sketch available. I'll click on this part. I'll start a 2D sketch on this. And I'll uh, basically 
draw a small rectangle also here finish my sketch I click on punch tool ok so here I'll uh, connect punch is what kind of square emboss yeah so click on open now it is asking me geometry is fine size is fine cross pen fold in flat pattern ok I give the center size I will decrease the size length not 1 inch 0.5 inch ok 0.5 mm it is taken uh, 50 mm no not 50 mm I will take uh, maybe 20 mm will look nice. 20 mm is our this is our this thing. I mean. How about 10 mm? 10 mm width is also 10 mm. I'll click on finish. See, we have created a punch over here. Okay, so this is the punch tool. Okay, so nearby entire sheet metal is complete all right so now we will learn assembly so for assembly i have created these two parts over here first is a cylinder second is a plate with a hole like cylinder okay so i'll click on this thing assembly now here in assembly i'll click on you can also create a part in assembly using this option over here but i will place my component I click on place now it is asking me for uh, my object so my part so i will select this part i will click on open and it is freely rotating now i will click on this part and it will create a, another copy i right click and i click escape now i am out of the command visibility i will uh, select visual style shaded with edges now what uh, ok Again, I'll go to assemble. Now I'll place my another component, which is a cylinder. So it its number is uh, maybe E or uh, its number is EX12. So this is my another cylinder that I created. I place it over here. Okay. This one I'll place it over here. I'll click on escape. Now to copy a part, you click on copy, you click on this part, you click next. You click OK and then see how copies are created. You can create copies of your part. Mirror is nothing but it creates a, if you have created a component in assembly over here, it will mirror the assembly using offset or something. Pattern is again same, it will pack pattern assembly. So these three features are the same. Free move is you click on free move, you click on the part, you can drag it pressing the left mouse button. Okay, free rotate is you click on the part and you press on the left mouse button and you can rotate that is free rotate ok so now we will joint is nothing but if you click on uh, this part over here click on this part you can see it automatically joins ok so but it is joining in the different direction you can also give what kind of joint you want over here ok so that is join command constraint constraint is a very important command first constraint that we are going to learn is mate so for mate you click on the part you click on this one and uh, you shift its side and you click ok so now you can see the both parts of both faces are mated ok 
uh, next I'll show you constraint you can also make this way you can make this axis and this axis okay now if you hold if you click on uh, click on the part here or I would select select axis okay this just came out I don't know why again I'll show you click on mate okay this axis this axis over here okay now there are different kinds of solutions that you can give motion you can give translation you can give translation how translate how where do you have, have to translate it so this is how you can mate also this way offset and orientation can also be predicted if you want you can see what kind of offset and prediction you want you click on uh, you click on another uh, you click on mate again okay you click on apply now it is applied now this mate is applied if i move this thing you can see it is moving okay now i have to constraint uh, another motions okay the motion between this i'll again click on constraint click on motion translation i'll click on this one i'll click on this face and i'll click on ok now if i try to move it will not move so this is the translation constraint that i gave click on click on set again again i'll show you constraint i click on translation i click on the part click on this face and i click on this face I click on OK. Now it is, it cannot be translated in any way. If you click on the object, the entire assembly will move. So that is translate. Okay, what's left now? Okay, the other parts are left. I'll click on constraint. I'll click on uh, angle mate. I'll click on the axis of this one. No, no, again. By mistake, I selected. I'll select the axis of this one and select the axis of this one okay now I want it directed angle now you can see the part it is at exact angle over here if I click uh, maybe 10 degrees I click on apply now if I see through this direction you can see that it is angled at 10 degrees over here So that is how you can angle mate. Uh, now we will see what is tangent mate. You click on the circular or cylindrical object and then you click on the face and see it becomes tangent. So it is tangent. Now I will tell you what is insert. You click on insert. You select this part. Select this part. The component gets inserted. You can lock the rotation. If you want motion can lock translation can be locked you can also give sets of constraints if you want constraint set one and everything anything that you want you can also use that so this is how you assemble components in inventor the remaining features are same you can also add an assembly from here you can select freedom analysis over here degrees of freedom you can give to any part or any assembly so this is basically how the sheet metal works in inventor all right guys so now we'll move on to the final thing which is drafting so you click on new part over here and you click on drawing now if you want to change these properties over here you can right click on this I click on i properties and here you can change the author name the project the status of the drawing the custom the save whatever it is everything you can change from here okay everything all these properties can be changed from here the date can also be changed over here okay now we'll talk about how to change the sheet size click on this iso click on right click click on edit definition and here you can 
edit whatever dimensions you want over here you can reduce or you can increase whatever it is okay now click on right click on sheet right click on the sheet option over here and click on edit sheet <coughs> here you can change the size a3 a2 a4 you can change the portrait or landscape from here click on ok you can see the sheet size has been changed all right now uh, yes now we'll place a component all right now we'll see how to place our components i click on base view now it has automatically selected what view i want if i want to change the view i'll click over here click on front and i place my front view over here okay now i want a, another view which is uh, this one click it over here the scale i can reduce the scale I wanted one as to two, or maybe one as to one will be look one as to one would look nice. Okay, I click on OK over here. Model state, we'll see what model state it is. Display options, red features, everything. Everything is recovery options. No, 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 not necessary. I click on OK and see now I have my views over here. Now I click on a view. you can move it pressing the left mouse button this view will, I also move this view over using left mouse button you just click on this red line over here and it will move I don't know why it was not selecting earlier ok I'll again press on this thing and move it little more I'll bring it uh, this was a first view so you can only move this component if you want to break the alignment right click on it and uh, right click on it and you can click alignment and you can break the alignment now these this can be moved as per your level ok so this is how you can break that now control z i don't want the alignment to be break, broken now now if I, if I want any project view over here click on projected view i click on the view and see projected view is formed over here so auxiliary view i click on this part over here click on ok see okay, here i can create auxiliary views using this function ok see auxiliary views are created now if i want a section view ok click on section view click on this part I click to the center line, I create a line over here, I create continue and now you can see we can get a section view from it, see, this is how, if, uh, if I right click on this object, if I uh, click on um, properties over here of this view, if I want to reduce its scale, click on it and its scale is reduced. If I want the view model state or I would say view over here, uh, I want shaded, click on OK, now the object becomes shaded. So these are my basic uh, views over here. Ok, I showed you the shade and everything. Section view also, sh also showed you. Now, now I will click on detail view. Maybe there is a chamfer over here. I click on the object over here. Click on okay, and I click on detail view. Select the object. Face. This face over here. I click it over here. Now you can see it has created a detail view over here. Overlay, overlay is no, nothing but it will just create a single view and it will position that view at different angle or at a different direction. Nail board is again, it will create a 2 flattened view of the same thing. That is not that much break. Break view, I create on this view. Uh, okay. A 
horizontal orientation. Six mm, not six mm gap. I will take maybe ten mm gap, or I'll take five mm gap to object. I don't know what the size that I took. Okay, I'll give where I want. Again, click on break view. I'll uh, give my location. Now see, I have created a break section view. Okay, so now we'll uh, I'll teach you the remaining components. Oh uh, yeah, which components were these? Okay, now I'll uh, first of all I have studied break. Okay, these three are remaining. So first of all we study slice component. So I click on slice over here. Okay, I'll uh, select the view and I'll select the sketch that I created. And you have to select it alternatively. Okay, click on this sketch, slice the whole part. Click on OK. See. The part gets sliced. Uh, next, I just undo these components. I don't want these sketches anymore. Okay, next, uh, which comp which is what is remaining? Crop. I click on crop. I click on view. Now I give a, a point, a corner point. I click this much of the object, and you can see the this much of object is showing. So this is basically crop. Okay, now I'll again control Z. Now breakout view. Breakout view, I'll click on the component. Okay, now it this requires a sketch. So I click on sketch. Slice also required a sketch. Slice basically requires uh, two lines over here, and I'll then select this view and this sketch over here. Okay, so breakout. For breakout, I'll connect, connect, consider a rectangle from this edge, from this edge to this edge. Okay, I'll finish my sketch. I'll uh, place views. I click on the breakout view. I'll select the view. I'll select it. It, it, it will automatically select the sketch. Okay. I'll give the depth. Profile is automatically selected. From point, yeah. You have to give the point from this point. Okay. And 5 mm is the depth. I click on OK and see. It will create a breakout section. So let's annotate what we have created so I click on annotate now to create basic dimensions you click on this dimension option over here you click on this dimension and it will dimensionize okay this will dimension this okay baseline is again the same thing it would consider one base point and using that base point it will create other dimensions ordinate dimensions is uh, it will just create an ordinate set and everything basically we don't use that chain is just used for creating chain dimensions okay arrange where you can arrange the dimension you can click on the dimension you can click on this dimension and you can click on these points over here see you can just move however you want okay you can also place it outside so yeah hole and punch click on hole punch you click on this and it will tell you what hole it is and what deep depth it is okay uh, chamfer is nothing but it will just show the chamfer over here if there's a chamfer uh, text is just for entering a text whatever text you want see text can be entered leader set is nothing but uh, if, if i click on this it will create a ladder where you can write whatever you want insert symbol so if you want to insert some symbol over here you can insert using your symbol library surface finish you just click the surface you want you click on surface and right click and click on continue and see now you can enter what surfacing and what machining you want okay what uh, whatever the features that are required over here the symbol type you want okay the whatever it is you can just enter into this this is how you can give surface finish welding is again if, if there is some welding you can just press on the uh, this thing and you can show welding over here okay right click continue and it will go take you to the weld menu over here where you can enter your weld options over here 
click on this and you are here you can select other features like if i want to give a datum i click on this one i click and see i can give my datum whatever letter if i want if i want b i can give on b and this my, this would be my datum okay uh end fill is nothing it's just used for like if you have to fill annotations in the geometry and everything there are various kinds of datums that you can give okay feature feature control frame this is very important like uh yeah for this whole i'll create a feature reference frame over here right click continue now yeah whatever tolerance i want the datum i want okay uh datum you can select what datum you have given b datum b tolerance you want the symbol you want what symbol you want you can click on the symbol coaxiality whatever you want tangent uh, cylindricity whatever it is surface of a line, uh, line profile of a line profile of any surface perpendicularity angularity whatever symmetry run out total run out straightness you can give through this uh, if i click on ok now you can see it has formed uh, two it has formed two feature control frames over here okay center line so this was the basic commands over here that you can use now if you want to give a center line just click on the center it would give a clear center line center line. i click on this point i click on the point and see again i click on this point i click on this point why it is not happening i don't know i click on this point i click on this point and i click over here see a center line happens position uh, automatic center line sector will be formed for cylindrical objects everything balloons balloons are very simple just click on the balloon that you want and it will create a balloon over here for assembly purpose it is used so that is balloon you can also give layering so finally if you want to save it click on save what time what kind of save you want inventor dwg file or anything click on save it will save it okay now what's left i'm just thinking what's left if anything is left in this you click on file you click on save as and you click on save as over here and if you want you can save in whatever format you want so this was basically inventor app i have like mentioned each and every views is finished datum is finished part list is nothing but part okay you select the part you want you click on okay and it will form a part list over here that is part whole is again the same thing revision is what kind of revision you want table you can enter the table you want and everything okay so basically inventor is finished completely to like and subscribe thank you thank you so much